One last thing that we have to do is discuss not necessarily the proof of these, but how we can sometimes use these special limits because they do show up. Um, and in fact, these problems are pretty easy overall. Oftentimes they just get, people get confused because they forget about them, okay? Um, but the idea is that sometimes you see something that looks kind of like these limits like that, but it's not entirely, right? Because here I've got x and x, but here I've got 5x and 7x, so they're not quite the same, right? So I kind of need the 5x down here if I want to use that limit. Of course, the way you can do that is um, simply by pulling out the 7, multiplying top and bottom by 5. So let me show you what I mean if I have sine of 5x and instead of having a 7x I want a 5x, well I pull a 7 here and a 5 there, right? These are the same. Okay? Now this 5, 5 7 goes out of the thing. Now I'm in a better spot, and in fact, for my intents and purposes, you could just tell me that's one and I believe you, I agree. But to be perfectly correct, what we ought to do is make a change of variables. So let's say 5x be theta, right? Now, as x goes to zero, 5x also goes to 0, so theta then goes to 0. So if I want, and your book is pretty insistent about this, but I personally think it's just a little silly, but you can make that change of variable specifically now to make your limit look exactly like that. And then I just say that that's 1. So question is, do I require that you write this? No. But I do want you to know what they're doing if you're reading it and they do that. They're basically making a change of variable so that this looks exactly like this. But I think we pretty much know that as x goes to 0, 5x goes to 0. So this is behaving the same way as that. And you can see that it's not going to be just 1 if these two coefficients are different because you are then, yes, you're going to zero, but you're going to zero at a different rate. 5x and 7x go to zero at a different rate. That is why you have to take that into account by pulling the 7 out. And then, of course, you can't change the value. That's why you have to, I want 5 there, I have to put 5 there, right? Obviously, well, I'm not changing the value. All right, so most of these kinds of limits that you might see with these um, are just um, I did we can take something that looks so similar to this and basically do a little bit of algebra to make it look like that. My next one is cosine theta minus one over sine theta. Okay? So, again, this is, if I look at it, it's 0 over 0, right? Um, so I have to do something with it, but one thing you might notice is that that looks like the top of that, and that looks like the top of that. So if I divide top and bottom by 1 over theta, then what I get are two limits that look like that. So you would only do this if you recognized, if you remember those and recognize this. And then the other thing I want to say is that we will eventually, we will learn L'Hopital's rule for those of you, some of you have seen it already, but for those of you who haven't, we will learn that and then you can do these limits using that. That's fine too. Um, really is fine with me. But um, 
Right now, don't use Levy Cow's rule until we learn it. It's in chapter four. All right, so now I look at this. I can see that this bottom part, I can rewrite this, right, with the limit on top and the limit on the bottom. So I'm really beating a dead horse with these limits here. Um, especially when I told you, okay, we'll learn an easier way to do these later. All right, so I don't know. Any case, you can then see this is zero on the top and one, so this one comes to zero. All right, so really, um, I, I've got one more just sort of for completion just to show you, but uh, yeah, sometimes you can do, you will see there's other ways of doing this. So this last one was kind of funny. Cosecant x times sine of sine of x. Right? Okay. So this is kind of weird, right? Because sine sine. Um, and then cosecant is one over sine. So if I write that, I have sine, I've got one over sine x here, and then sine of sine of x. So you can see, sort of, right, what's going on here. This is similar to the first one we did, only instead of 5x and 7x, in the parentheses it's sine x. So this just does look weird. Honestly, this one I would even write with a change of variables. Let theta be sine x, right? As x goes to zero, sine of zero, well, theta, which will be sine of zero then, goes to zero. Okay? So then this becomes limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta, and then this is immediately one. Right? Yes. Okay. So those are a couple of weird limits.